All right, today's topic is taking your practice to the game. And this is Tips with Trev, the show where I give developing baseball players some easy tips to end their slumps faster and become a superstar sooner. Let's do it. Okay, the first thing that you need to do to take practice to the game is to make practice a lot more like the game. Make it harder than the game. This can come in a lot of different ways. Uh, one really good thing that I can recommend is to create a small game to work on a specific skill set, compete, have some distractions, have some people, you know, mocking you or talking crap to you or whatever the case is to simulate the fans, have some noise, have interrupt the game uh, and, you know, take your mind off it, do a math problem or something like that that makes you think about something completely different, then come back to the activity. And when I talk about a game, what do I mean? It can be like for a pitcher, it could be a command game. If I'm working on my command of a fastball and I got a buddy with me or even if I don't, but preferably you have someone there that you're training against or you're training with, uh, let's, let's create a game. First one to 10, hitting this specific spot uh, wins something, has to take the other guy to dinner or I mean, shoot, back, back in the day, we used to bet paintball shots on it. So the loser would actually have to stand there with his back to the person and get shot with a paintball gun with no shirt on. Uh, but this is about raising the consequences in practice so that there's actual like, repercussions if you don't win. So it's training competition. It's training the actual skill that you're trying to, that you're trying to train. It's training you know, under pressure with consequences, with you know, repercussions, like I said, for not winning. So this is super important. It could be, let's say, if you're fielding ground balls, if you're working on trying to field ground balls, it could be you, know, you and your buddy are trying everything you can to make the person bobble it. And whoever can get 10 clean catches in a row with their feet set and something like that wins. Or perhaps you have to start with your eyes closed and as soon as someone says go, you have to open them up and catch the ball. Like, there's a lot of different ways you can make little fun creative games to center it around a certain skill set, a certain specific skill that you're trying to practice. Then you learn the skill better, your brain learns the skill better because you're actually playing, you're enjoying it, you're, you're having to be creative. It's, it's not just the same thing over and over and over so your brain can kind of check out and you go on autopilot. You don't learn anything that way. So that's the first thing that you have to do. Make practice more like the game, make it harder than the game. The second thing that's important to talk about is getting live practice reps. Okay, so this could be a hitter facing off against a pitcher where the hitter is specifically trying to work on not swinging at certain, let's say not swinging at sliders out of the zone, but swinging at sliders in the zone. And the pitcher can work on commanding his slider. And then you can create a little game out of that. Okay, who, who gets more swings, who, who, who accomplishes it more often? The, the pitcher throwing it for a strike and, uh, and the hitter doesn't swing, that could be a point for the pitcher. The pitcher throwing it out of the zone and the hitter does swing, that's a point for the pitcher. But if the hitter lays off a slider out of the zone, point for the hitter. Okay, who's gonna get to number 10? Who's gonna get to 10 points or 20 points first? But that way you're actually seeing live pitching as opposed to a batting practice pitcher standing up there and flipping stuff and that's not the same speed, it's not the same delivery, it's not the same spin, doesn't have the same type of movement. You're not making the practice hard enough. So live practice reps are super important. Uh, standing there and having a hitter actually hit ground balls and, and having to read. You know, sometimes it's a short hop, sometimes it's um, a line drive that you have to jump for, backhand, forehand, it doesn't matter. Like create a game and then get live reps as much as you can. Sometimes you can't get live reps, I understand that, so simulate as closely as possible. You can take a, a pitching machine and instead of having it throw you know, just straight from the, the center of the rubber, like maybe move it off to the side that you're practicing an angle of it coming in where you're facing like a, a side armor or a lefty like Chris Sale who's throwing from way out here versus um, a righty like uh, Mike Fires maybe who throws from directly over top. Like set the pitching machine in different areas uh, change speeds on it, change spin rates on it, have to swing a different bat. Like Whatever you're trying to work on, uh, design a, a live environment. Get as close to the game as possible to practice that skill set in. The next thing that's important to talk about is having a feedback loop in the game. So now you've developed your skill set, you've worked on it in practice, now you actually go into a game setting and you have to have a feedback loop, a way of measuring were you better at it or were you not. Uh, this can be like for pitchers, if you're working on velocity, this can be a track man or a radar gun. If you're uh, working on command, like have a way of going back and you know, film your outing and then go back and say, okay, I tried to throw the ball here and it ended up there. Give yourself a score. 
Like, but you got to have some sort of feedback loop to evaluate if you are good or if you are bad, if you are in the middle, are you making progress over time? So is your training being effective or what? Like there has to be a feedback loop. And then the last thing that there is to do if you've done all that is just to commit to it. You know, I've worked with guys in the past where it's like, okay, we're working on a curveball. We got this curveball in practice at low intent. We got it at high intent. We got it in the bullpen. We got it in live at bats. We go into the game, they don't throw it at all. Well, why? You know, especially if it's like a spring training outing or something like that. Like you've done all this work. This is your time to, to make sure that you can transfer this skill to the game. But, but there's fear there sometimes. Like, well, what if I give up a hit? You know, what if it doesn't work? What if I can't throw it for a strike? Like, you got to just commit to it. You got to take it from practice. You've made your practice super hard. Take it into the game. Commit to doing it. And, and that's where the feedback loop comes in. If you commit to doing it, then you can get feedback on if it worked or not. And you can make adjustments in your practice. So you pick up the skill set. Um, a lot quicker that way than just, let's say you're hitting on a tee and all you ever do is hit on a tee, then you try to take it to the game, but now it speeds up on you and you don't try to apply the same, you know, movement pattern that you had off the tee, and then, then what progress did we make? Why did we waste 100 swings or 200 swings on a tee? Why did we waste an hour and a half or two hours? Like, because this isn't going to transfer to the game. So that's, that's kind of the process that I, that I see on transferring skills to the game. You uh, increase the, the consequences and the level of the practice, try to make it as game-like as possible. Try to get live reps in practice if possible or as close to live as possible. Set up a feedback loop for the game. How are you going to measure your success and, or your failures? And then commit to it and do it. And if you do those things, you'll be able to transfer your practice into the games a lot quicker. So that's all for today. Hope you learned something. If you did, share this with a friend, ask them to subscribe, leave a like, a comment. Let me know if there's anything else that you're struggling with, if you'd like to hear more about a specific topic, uh, whatever it is. I make these videos for you guys, try to help you guys out, give you some inside information. So if you did find this video helpful, if you could share it with a friend of yours and ask them to subscribe or let them know this channel exists, that would be great. It would really help me on my goal to getting to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And other than that, I will see you guys on Friday.